Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia. What are you waiting for? Press the like button. Uh. Press, press the like button. The below, below, you know, subscribe button. Press also, yeah. Press, press, press. Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, this is the summary for the day of 753 for the 17th of March. Uh, do press the like button and subscribe. And now uh, we're going to start off with the Frontline Changes Report and uh, we're going to start off with Belgorod Front. So uh, for those that uh, do you know, follow this war uh, very religiously, you probably have seen uh, footage of Ukrainian forces uh, going into a school over in Gorkivsky. And uh, this is over within the Russian territory. Uh, there is seemingly no sign of uh, fighting. The Ukrainian forces uh, removed the Russian flag and planted their Ukrainian flag. And uh, this basically uh, signifies capture uh, of the Russian territory uh, over the north of Onorobivka. So the but there is no signs of fighting. Like there is no bullet holes. Everything looks perfectly fine. And uh, even pro-Ukrainian OSIN uh, claims that they walked one kilometer in, changed the flag, and then walked out. So, uh, and I didn't say that. It's a pro-Ukrainian guy that said that. You no, know, but the, I will, based on our standards, this is a Ukrainian capture. And so we will wait until Russia uh, proves that they have retaken those positions. So otherwise, I will assume that they are there. Uh, so that's all for the uh, Belgorod Front, uh, Gorkis, uh, Gorkovsky uh frontline change the next frontline change is over in the Adyevka front uh, over at Olivka uh, Ukrainian mapping deep state UA continue to show that the Russians have made progress over in Olivka and uh, this this time around uh, taking almost all of Olivka I think left left with this part this small little part probably is even less than 10% of Olivka so we will probably see the full capture of Olivka very very soon and the fact that the Ukrainian forces have been uh, getting pushed back uh, might might be a sign that the Ukrainians may be running out of, uh, running out of uh, heavy equipments like you no know, Bradley's and uh, maybe ammunition maybe manpower whatnot I'm not sure there might be some reasons why the Ukrainians are getting pushed back uh, at Olivka and uh, so and this is the second day coming the previous one was this this part uh, that was being uh, taken by the Russians so the Russians are inching forward uh, and the last frontline change is over at Luhivske so Luhivske is over in the Zaporizhia front uh, so it's over here this is Orikiv this is the Orikiv sector Zaporizhia city Zaporizhia front and uh, at Luhivske uh, there is uh, this is based on the Rybas mapping so I, actually I should put this as uh, yeah this is Russian claim I'm, I have never uh, never really mapped Luhivsky as under Russian control. So I'm not sure uh, if it is indeed under Russian control. So we will continue to monitor, but tentatively based on the Russian uh, mapping, uh, now the front line actually looks like this, north of uh, Novoporovska and uh, Novokalivka. And, and nearby there is uh, the capture of Mirne, uh, being reported by the Russian Defense Ministry, which is then the reverse. I have mapped Mirne as under Russian control. Somehow, they say that they captured it. So, uh, that goes. Let's go for you, the the folk of war. Sometimes, you know, this is what happens. And and as, especially for the Zaporizhia line, it was very uh vague. It's very vague. Uh, no one exactly knows fully hundred percent where the front line is. So. Yeah, so that's very, very interesting to me. So that's all for the frontline changes report. We go now to the strategic and tactical reporting. Uh, and we're going to start off with Transnistria. So very interesting, Transnistria. There is a Ukrainian drone strike happening within Transnistria's territory uh, over at Teraspo. Uh, there is um, a suicide drone hitting a very, very old Mi-8 helicopter. So this helicopter, uh, I believe it should be considered to be under... Uh, Tanis, uh, Transnistria's uh, inventory, uh, in inventory. So, um, so the the destruction. Uh, this of course went viral and uh, it caused some uh, confusion because 
uh, they thought the training is under attack. I mean, te technically it is under attack, but it's not an uh, Ukrainian offensive into Transnistria itself. And uh, so this is also not the first time that the Ukrainians have attacked Transnistria. Uh, previously, they actually did send drone attacks into Transnistria. They even sent infiltrators into Transnistria. That some, I think some of them was arrested. So the so this is not the first time Ukrainians have tried to you know, stir some things uh, within Transnistria. And uh, they are trying to get the Russians to react. So give them a possibility to invade into Transnistria. But this is, of course, a very contrary... A controversial you know, decision if they ever do it because Moldova see Transnistria as part of their uh, sovereign territory and uh, if Ukraine invade into Transnistria, it is considered an invasion into Moldova. And uh, that would be one hell of a difficult thing to explain away. So, uh, which is why Transnistria still remains as Transnistria and the Ukrainians still have not invaded it uh, right now. But no somehow someone just have an itchy finger and decided to fly a drone into this a very old helicopter but somehow this helicopter is filled with uh fuel so when after it hit it actually burns up uh quite spectacularly so uh it is it is uh a helicopter that is actually uh, possibly can fly moving on uh from Transnistria, uh we go on to the Kherson front at the Kherson front uh there is no report of fighting uh, over in the river or the bridge heads didn't see that reports uh, but we do have a uh, russian uh, artillery striking uh, sadove and uh so you no know, just this is a continuation of the russians are uh, just hunting ukrainian forces all across uh, the Kherson front and there is also a lancet drone strike against a vessel so uh, uh allegedly based on crimea caprice uh the joe locator uh, they say that this boat is actually a petrol boat and then it got struck by a Lancet uh, drone. Uh, the it doesn't look like the sh the boat is sunk. Uh, I think, but it's just damaged, uh, particularly over the bridge area. So that's all for the Kherson front. Uh, nothing much over here. Uh, over at the Zaporizhia front, uh, we have uh, the Russian forces uh, continue their attack. Uh, we have this time round. We have fighting reported. Let me see. I can zoom in. Okay, that's a bit too much. Uh, fighting reported at uh, Zeribianki. Zerbianki towards Novo Danilivka and Robotine northwest of Rebove as well as Merne. But particularly at Merne, uh, the Russian forces, uh, at least the Russian Defense Ministry declared that they have captured Merne. Uh, this came uh, this doesn't mean a lot on the DPS mapping because we have always always mapped uh, Merne as under Russian control. So it could be a gray zone kind of thing, uh, where now they have captured it. So uh there is nothing really much to talk about uh, in this area here, uh, in the Orkiv salient, because there isn't really much information about it. Uh, at Merne, uh, the Russian Defense Ministry simply mentioned they have captured Mernoye, and uh, and then uh, based on Raiba's information, uh, I got a phone call. Now I have no idea what I just said. So anyway, uh, fighting reported at Merne. So the uh, so this information from Raiba, they say that uh, the thirty fifth Combined Army. Uh, arms combined arms uh, army they, they established control at Merne, knocking out the the territorial defense the 203rd battalion so and they also mentioned the ukrainian tried to counter attack but did not work out so yeah so the russians have taken this position and this on top of that the russians actually uh, fired at uh, who uh, who 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 lie pisky who lie pisky uh, yeah whatever that is so so the Russian forces are bombarding there while they are actually launching the attack uh, through Merne. We will continue to monitor and see uh, whether this is an intention or there's a, any intention to go further north, cutting off the highway. Uh, so we shall continue to monitor. And uh, sorry for for the disruption. I uh, have two phone calls, so I got very confused. So anyway, uh, there is at Melanivka, uh, there is a, a helicopter strike on a house. And Milinivka. So I'm not there's nothing much to really talk about. It's just a geolocation or to show that the Ukrainians are there. We move on to the Donetsk front. So this is the Donetsk front, uh at the Velika Nova Circle sector, Voleda sector, and Marinka sector. And uh in this area here, there is actually only Ukrainian attack over at, uh, Vodian. Russians are concentrating in the Marinka sector. We're fighting at Novo Mihailivka, uh, Bobeda, Georgivka, as well as Krasnohorivka. So the concentration is all over there. Uh, there's no more fighting reported around this area here, except there's one Joe location of a Russian airstrike at um 
at this uh, what's this place called again? Uh, Uruzaini. So that's all for this area. Let me zoom in. I believe that's yeah. That's uh, there's no fighting around here. The the Russian Defense Ministry mentioned the Ukrainians attacking in the Vodian region, but again, this front line is very unclear. Uh, it's not so sure why they use the word Vodian. So we will continue to monitor whether if there is a Russian uh, capture that is totally un uh, unreported by uh, most of our sources. So. Over at Novo Mihalivka, there seems to be some uh, major attack. The geolocation of by Deep State UA of the Russian attack going down this road, uh, showing uh, multiple strikes on the Russian armored. Uh, yeah, that shows that the Ukrainians still have very firm control over Novo Mihalivka, and there is also a strike, a artillery strike on Ukrainian positions uh, over at the farm region. So, uh, the front line definitely is still uh very fierce uh, the ukrainians still have very firm control over the front lines whatever this is uh is not that strong uh in terms of the russian position so the fact that the russian uh, forces still get strike driving down this road up to novo mihalevka shows that the russians don't really have very firm control over this area just yet so we will continue to monitor the uh, this battle of novo mihalevka flood up north there is no more information there is just another joint location of, uh, I think, drone strike or something on the Russian forces. Nothing important. So, no news regarding Krasnohorivka. So, yeah, very bizarre. So, that's all for the Donetsk front. Uh, over at the uh, ADFK front, uh, at the ADFK front, uh, the Russian forces continue to put pressure on the Ukrainians, fighting reported in the Nevelsky region, over at Povomaisky. Uh, Jovene region, Tonenke, Olivka, Bedaichi. Ukrainian forces are still trying their best to counter-attack with fighting reporter at Novo Bakhmutivka, Bedaichi, uh, over at Vodian and Povomaisky. So, but you can see that the, the entire center part has kind of lost it. You know, the, the Ukrainians, now you, see, you can see the attack is only on the flanks. The counter-attack is only on the flanks. The entire initiative in the center has shifted into a Russian uh, initiative. So, and this also ac accumulated in the in the fact that the Russians have taken grounds over at Olivka. The Russians, uh, this is based on the mapping by the Ukrainian mapping. So the Russians are on the verge of full capture of Olivka, fulfilling this prophecy by Russian mapping. Uh, this Russian mapping uh, is still not corroborated by the Ukrainian side. Uh, so the Ukrainians, are uh, definitely still you no know, their mapping is still more you know reliable at least deep state UA. So uh situation will continue. Uh, we will continue to monitor the situation over at the at the FK front. Uh over at the New York front there is uh some fighting. The Ukrainians restarted their attack at Shumi and Pivdene and the Russians attack at Olesandropil. So we will continue to monitor. Uh this is uh one of those places I don't expect much frontline change. Uh, so that's all from New York. Uh, moving on to the Bakhmut front, in the southern flank of the Bakhmut front, Russian forces continue their usual attack at Klishevka, Andreevka, Kudyomivka, and this time around with at Ozerenivka. So suddenly there is this increase in the attention at Kudyomivka and Ozerenivka. Again, uh, it might be yet another false positive uh, because uh, you know, another you know, inaccuracy. Because previous time I thought that they are serious, then they are not serious. The Russians always like this, you no. Know? Uh, it's very hard to predict the Russians when they are very serious. So, uh, tentatively we'll continue to monitor, and uh, this is looking like some uh, uh, Christmas tree, very fat Christmas tree. We're moving on to the northern flank, the Russians are attacking at Budanivka as well as at Ivanivsky. So. This is the situation. Uh, not much changes, so it could be just very positional. No fighting over in this uh, northern part of the Bakhmut front. We move into the Sivers front. At the Sivers front, the Russian forces are attacking at Rosdolivka. Uh, and that's about it. There's no fighting reported at Blohorivka in the Luhansk region. So that's all from the Sivers front. And if you are still watching at this point at 40 minutes, do press the like button and subscribe. We move on to the Crimea front. Crimea front, as per I mentioned in the last set wrap, has went quiet. There's nothing over here. And Spetoy front also very quiet. Over at the Kupians front, at the Kupians front, Russian forces are reportedly attacking at Sinkivka and Kaislevka. Ukrainian forces are attacking at uh, Sinkivka, and uh, that's about it. Uh, so we will continue to monitor. I don't think there's nothing. Uh, there's anything uh, serious around here. 
And uh, we'll go into the Belgorod front, uh, the most exciting front line right now, uh, other than the ADFK front. The Ukrainian forces continue to be pushing at Kozinka. So fighting is reported at Kozinka, according to the Russian Defense Ministry and Raiba. Uh, the, the fighting is still pretty much on the western outs uh, outskirts of the settlement, uh, pretty much in this uh, area here in this area here, like this area here. Uh, and the Ukrainian forces are generally uh, trying to attack through the forest because there's more cover over there. Moving through the open, of course, is a death trap. And uh, they did try to send helicopter. Uh, this this is Joe located uh, just within the Russian territory, uh, around 300 meters into the Russian territory. They landed uh, troops. However, the helicopter is shot down by a man pad. And uh, so this destruction of the helicopter must be very expensive uh, for the Ukrainians because the Ukrainians don't really have that much helicopters left now. So this fighting continues, but uh, it still did not really do much. Uh, it doesn't seem like the Ukrainians actually go very far. And um, there is no new Joe location. The Joe location uh, today I saw from Crimea Capris is already reported by military summary already, which I already mapped around here. So we will continue to monitor. Uh, the situation at Kozinka, I don't think it's going to go far. Uh, at Popivka itself, the Russian forces are striking Ukrainian positions with air strikes and artillery strikes, as well as drone strikes, hitting Ukrainian positions within Popivka, uh, handicapping the Ukrainians from making an another advance over towards Spod uh, Spodiario Shino. So, this is it. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, this. The Belgorod offensive is effectively over. They can't really do much now. Uh, with small group of forces without an armored feast, I don't think they can do, do much things. Uh, there is, of course, this uh, propaganda piece uh, with the Ukrainian uh, units entering into Gorkovsky, uh, planting some flag uh, over at, the, at this uh, school. So this is confirmed Joe location. I actually geolocated this myself as well. So this is actually a confirmed Joe location. And uh, this shows possible Ukrainian capture of this part of this uh, border region. However, uh, rumors says that the Ukrainian forces that planted the flag have actually uh, redraw back into Ukrainian territory. Uh, which means that it's rather pointless if they actually do that because you risk your life walking a kilometer into enemy territory just to plant the flag is rather pointless. Uh, but no, but of course, uh, based on our standards of mapping, we, we will consider consider this as a Ukrainian capture. So that's all for this uh, Belgorod front. Uh, otherwise, over at the Shanehi, oh, sorry, Shuni, Shumi region, there is a joint location of a destruction, a drone strike on the Ukrainian position at Kotin. And uh, this is within uh, the Ukrainian territory. And that's all. The Russian attack, the infiltration uh, at Starahuta as well as uh, Bruski was not repeated. The Ukrainian Defense Ministry did not mention about this attack anymore. So this might be just be a probing attack. So that's all for the SIPREP. This is the summary for the day of 753 for the 17th of March. So, uh, so just some very short conclusions. Um, the Transnistria situation um, of the helicopter strike uh, by the drone, the helicopter destruction is not going to do much. Uh, the Ukrainians do not dare to attack into Transnistria without the mandate from Moldova. And Moldova really do not want to get embroiled into this conflict because... Uh, the reality is, if war spill over into Moldova, the the higher chance is that in the longer term, Transnistria will become bigger. So rather than this a badly drawn banana, they will actually become a a, a very big, fatter banana. So so we will continue to monitor, but uh, I don't think that's much to be excited about. Uh, similarly, the going back to Belgorod, uh, the Ukrainian offensive over at Belgorod is effectively over. I do not see them able to do much more. They are just simply you know, trying to squeeze out whatever they could. Uh, although I still find it very interesting that they managed to walk into the Gorkovsky, uh, Gorkovsky in, without uh, opposition. That's actually quite funny. And um, But the fighting over this area here, with especially with the destruction of the Mi-8, 
just show that the Russians are very, very near. This uh, corroborates that the Russians have very firm control over this area here with the helicopter flying in this area and get destroyed. Show, with a man pad means that the, the Russian forces are really nearby. So that's that's all for this Belgorod front. And uh, and then we move on to, uh, at, the, at the FK front, as I mentioned just now in the SIBRAP, uh, the fact that the, the Ukrainian attacks are only reported in the flanks over at Vodian, Pervomaisky, Badaichi, and the Novo uh, with this entire center, central part being an entirely a Russian attack, uh, shows that the lines is starting to break again. This this door, this window has has uh, starting to break again. Of course, the Ukrainians have a lot more troops right now. So they will definitely try to plug the hole uh, to, to stop any breakthrough. But it just does shows that you know, the center part is still the weak spot. It's still the weak point that uh, the Ukrainians are trying to plug the hole. Uh, so, and uh, otherwise, the battles in the Marinka sector have just went you know, very quiet. Uh, the Battle of Krasnohorivka, Krasno Battle of Georgivka, Battle of Novo Mihailivka has all went really quiet. I think the Russians are not really focusing that much. They did try at uh, Novo Mihailivka a lot. Yesterday's report was that they are attacking in two different directions. And uh, the, one of these directions was actually uh, taken, the video was taken on the drone, but it, it must have failed. Must have failed. So the, the attack has failed. So we will continue to monitor. Otherwise, I think the rest of the front line is rather you no know, tame, and uh, not really worth you no know, talking too much about it. And uh, at uh, Zaporizhia, of course, the Russian force, the uh, Russian Defense Ministry announced the capture of Mirne. Uh The only significance I would say is that if this, uh, if this capture leads to a Russian attack northward and cut off the highway, and then I think that will present a logistical problem for you, the Ukrainian side because, uh. The highway links uh, Huyai Pole all the way towards uh, Omenik, which actually leads to Orikiv. Uh, if they they lose this part, uh, if they lose this part, then they will have to go around Kopani. And uh, yeah, it's just a slight detour, not very big, but of course, these are not big highways. So, you know, not, it, it will be very inconvenient for the Ukrainians. But yeah, I mean, the entire freaking map of Ukraine is now very inconvenient. So, uh, not I, it's not something that the Ukrainians uh, can't overcome so the Ukrainians can definitely Uk overcome this if the Russians even get there so not not very very significant so anyway this is the summary summary for the day of uh, 753 17th of March blah, 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 blah. Uh, press the like button subscribe I'll see you guys in the next update